Hello and welcome. In this video, I will be showing you how to use HTML comments. What are HTML comments? HTML comments are used to describe and also to debug your code. By debug, I mean troubleshoot. So if there's something wrong with your code, you can use HTML comments to try and find out where the problem is. HTML comments are ignored by the web browser when the web page loads. Let's take a look at the syntax. Syntax basically refers to how something is done. So this is how you would add a comment to an HTML document. So you start with the less than sign, the exclamation mark, two dashes, then the text you want to add to the comment, and then two dashes, and then the greater than sign. So let me show you some comments that I have added to a document. This is a document we've been working on on the course. So I've already inserted some comments. You can see here, I've added a comment here. So you do the less than sign, exclamation, two dashes, and then the text you want to add. And you do two dashes and then the greater than sign. It's very important that you end the comment properly. If not, it will comment out your entire code and nothing will get displayed on the page. So you can see here, this just describe what this is. It says the content inside the head element is not displayed by the browser. So comments are useful because you can describe various parts of your code to yourself and to others who may want to look at your code. When you write code that you don't describe, you may know what you're doing at that time, but maybe several months or even years down the line, you come back to that code. You may have forgotten what certain aspects of the code does. So comment is useful in describing your code. Where you place comments is also important. You can see here I've placed it next to the actual tag so it doesn't affect what's displayed. You can also place it on a separate line by itself. You can, so you can see here I've placed a comment here on the side and I've placed it here on a separate line by itself. You can see the comments have not displayed on the page because they are ignored when the web browser loads. You can see here, I've added several comments here. These are all comments and they are all ignored by the web browser. These are, so far, these are all single line comments. You can also add comments that will affect multiple lines of code. For example, here, I can shift this here, this ending comment. If I wanted to affect all this code, I just come here and put and that will comment out all this. You can see the content has disappeared because I've commented out the entire one. So this is how you would comment out multiple lines of code if you wish to do so. So I'm just going to insert that comment back. So that's how you add multiple line comments and also single line comments. You can also use comments for debugging or troubleshooting. Say for example, if certain parts of your code is not appearing properly or not displaying properly, you can just comment out different parts of the code at a time and just test different aspects and see, try to find out where the problem lies. So they are useful both as a descriptive method to describe your code and also for troubleshooting purposes. So that's it for this video on HTML comments. Many thanks for watching and bye for now. In this video, I will introduce you to CSS. I will also be explaining the CSS rule set. By rule set, I mean the syntax or the way the CSS structure is put together. What is CSS? CSS stands for Cascading Style sheets. CSS describes how HTML elements should be displayed. CSS is what is referred to as a style language and not a programming language.
CSS is the code you use to style your web page. Just like a stylist can style your hair, you can use CSS to style HTML elements. A typical example would be if you wanted to style all the paragraph elements on your HTML page, if you want to turn the content or the text into red, this is how you would write the CSS. So the P will indicate the actual selector, which is the HTML element you're trying to style. The color will be the property that you are trying to apply. And the blue will be the value for the property that you're trying to apply. So what this syntax is saying, or this rule set is saying, I want to make all the paragraph element blue. Let's take a look at a typical CSS rule set. So the whole structure you can see on the screen is referred to as a rule set, but often called rule for short. So let me quickly run through the syntax here. So when you want to apply CSS to an HTML element, the very first thing you do is you have to specify the element and that is referred to as a selector. So in this case, the P here is the selector, which is the HTML element I want to apply styling to. Next thing you need to do, you need to put in an opening curly brace and a closing curly brace. Very important, you have the curly braces and inside the curly braces is where you actually write the CSS. So it contains of different parts. So the color here, you can apply any property. The color basically is just one of many properties that you can use to style HTML elements. In this illustration, I am styling the paragraph element with the color property. That means I'm going to change the color of all elements that I've got the P tag. Okay, so the color is referred to as a property and then you use a colon. It's very important. You have to separate the property from the property value with a colon. You can see this colon here. Once you've indicated the property, then you have to give it a value. And this is known as the property value. In this example, I'm styling the paragraph tag, which is this P here, which is a selector. I'm changing the color property to purple. Okay, so that's how you do it. And when you finish, you have to end it with a semicolon. Semicolon is very important because it tells the CSS rule set that this is the end of this declaration. So the entire thing here from the color property to the property value is called a declaration. So these are the various parts of a CSS rule set. Before you can apply CSS to an element, you need to consider all these various parts. In this illustration, I've just got a single rule here. You can have multiple. For example, I could decide to add more properties. The color is just one property. I could add a size, which is another property, and then give the size a value. So there are different properties you can apply to an HTML element to style it. So the key points to note here is that don't forget the semicolon. If you forget the semicolon, the styling will not work. It will not be applied. So don't forget that. And also don't forget to separate the property that you're trying to style from the value. So property and value must be separated with a colon. And don't forget the opening and curly braces. Your property and the value must be contained in between the curly braces. So you have to start off with a selector being the HTML element you want to start. You can style many, any selectors. You can also style multiple selectors at a time. 
by separating each one with a comma. But in this illustration, just to make things keep things simple, I'm just using one selector. In this video, I explained what CSS means and also illustrated how a CSS rule set works. Thank you for watching and bye for now.